Hey backers, Rylan here. Today we're going to be talking about our print simulator. It's basically a machine that we use to draw with light. And that allows us to see what the software and the hardware does without looking at the artifacts and problems that might be caused by the resin. When troubleshooting the Peachy Printer, it's really important that we segregate out the different components so that we can really pinpoint where problems are actually arising. And that's exactly what the Print Simulator lets us do. With the Print Simulator, we can be sure that any problems we see are not coming from things like the dripper or resin and possibly breakover effects or other, other uh, pieces of the environment that we've just taken out of the picture with the Print Simulator. It's basically a combination of some computer-controlled cameras, a PG printer, and a large, ugly cardboard box that has been spray-painted black with a white background at the very end of it, uh, and uh, a couple pieces of software that are allowing us to compile all that data. The PG printer shines on the end wall at the other end of the box, and we control the shutter of the camera so that we expose the whole time that the PG printer is drawing a layer. Once we get to that stage in the process, we have the ability to then take all those images and compile them in a couple of different ways. One way we can compile them right now is by creating a video of those images. And another way we can compile them is to create a point cloud, so for a 3D graphics program to look at. It let's us spin around the object and look at that object in 3D space to give us a good idea of what problems there are and why those problems can be happening. Using brightness, contrast, and other thresholds, we can amplify the inconsistencies in laser intensity. By using a point cloud to collect all the data from the photos, we can see if those inconsistencies happen consistently in the same place over and over, layer after layer. Print simulators are something that I've been thinking about for quite some time, and this isn't the first time that we built one, but it is the first time that we built software that's doing the valuable data collection that we need to do to actually get value out of the print simulator. And that software took quite a bit of time to write and we put a lot of effort into doing it correctly and, and really getting statistical uh, data that, with high contrast and, and pulling a lot of information from the photos that we were taking. So although it was a bit of an investment, I'm really excited about the results that we're getting. After a lot of trial and error, we discovered that we were having a problem with some of the software we are using to generate the G-code, which we then use with the Peachy printer. That took us quite a bit of time and looking at raw files, and it, it cost us a lot, of, uh, a lot of money just to look through that information. Uh, this new tool allows us to do that very quickly, and we looked at an older set of data uh, with this new tool, and we were able to spot that same problem in seconds whereas before it took hours and even possibly days. So what this allows us to do is diagnose problems before they happen, find out the solutions and find out the causes um, very quickly. So it, it speeds up the process for our software development and our hardware development dramatically. Sometimes for a software guy, it's, it's fun to get off your chair and uh, do some physical labor. Uh, in my case, the physical labor was taping cardboard boxes together. Uh, there's an awfully awkward picture of me crawling through these cardboard boxes with some spray paint, getting the insides painted correctly, and then taping a, taping a screen to the end. We ran into a lot of interesting problems when designing this print simulator, and I'd like to talk about just two of them now. First of all, it's not uncommon for us to have 3,000 layers in just an inch tall print. And that means we need to take 3,000 pictures just to simulate one print. That is a lot of shutter actuations for a typical DSLR camera. And it wouldn't take us very long to burn out the shutter in a typical camera. That meant that we had to find a camera with a pretty specific set of features. We needed to find a camera that had a global electronic shutter. That's a shutter that has no moving parts and exposes the entire chip at the same time. The camera also had to have bulb mode and full manual control of everything else that it was doing. It also needed to be affordable, and that's not an easy find. The second thing that we ran into was the issues with the sound card's audio buffer. The sound card's audio buffer makes it a little bit unpredictable just as to when the layer is actually going to start. So it's hard to know when to signal the Arduino to open the shutter and close the shutter. 
And so there was a lot of buffer juggling that we had to do to uh, really capture exactly the entire layer and not too much and not too little of uh, what the printer was doing. I'm excited about what this new tool has to show us. So stay tuned for the next update.